ओके सो जैसा कि हम लोग सबको पता है सी पी वन इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट एग्जाम तो इसको एक बार में निकालना इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट आज हम लोग सब इस पेपर को पढ़ रहे हैं एंड जो मेरे को लगता है वो ये है कि आप जब एक बार पढ़ते हो लाइक like आपने मटेरियल पढ़ा आपने उसके बैक क्वेश्चन सॉल्व किए एंड आप जैसे ही मतलब रिवीजन नोट्स के तरफ में जाते हो या फिर आप एसेट्स पढ़ते हो आप फ्लैश कार्ड्स पढ़ते हो मतलब आप देखोगे कि आपका मोटा मोटी पूरा टाइम खत्म होने को आ गया सो so हार्डली मतलब आप देखोगे आपका चार पांच महीना बस खाली एक बार सिलेबस पढ़ने में निकल जाता है एंड आप एग्जाम देते हो हाफ हार्टेडली आपको लगता है आपका होगा नहीं होगा द मेन रीजन इज इसका वॉल्यूम ओके तो टूडे वी हैव अनुष्का सो द मेन थिंग अबाउट अनुष्का विच आई वुड लाइक टू पॉइंट आउट इज इसने एग्जाम्स एक बार में क्लियर किए हैं बी इट सी पी टू बी इट सी पी थ्री ठीक है एंड रिसेंटली शी हैज बेसिकली बिकम एन एसोसिएट एंड तो उसका क्या स्ट्रैटेजी था हम लोग को आज वो सीखना है ताकि हम लोग कम टाइम में इस पेपर को क्लियर कर पाए ठीक है उसका क्या स्ट्रैटेजी था ये आज हम लोग को जानना पड़ेगा ताकि किस तरीके से इसको एक बार में निकाला जा सकता है देखो ज्यादा पढ़ने से कुछ नहीं होगा मान लो तीन बार चार बार मटेरियल पढ़ लिया बट यू आर स्टडिंग इट इन द रॉन्ग मैनर तो वो चीज अपने को हेल्प नहीं करेगा तो अपने को ये चीज देखना पड़ेगा कि किस तरीके से पढ़ने से इस पेपर को हम लोग क्लियर कर सकते हैं सो आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट अनुष्का सो अनुष्का नाउ द प्लेटफॉर्म इज ऑल योर्स सो ऑल कैन सो यू कैन बेसिकली गाइड अस कि आपने किस तरीके से पढ़ाई किया एंड uh, क्या स्ट्रैटेजी अभी हम लोग को अपनाना चाहिए फॉर दिस सेप्टेम्बर एग्जाम्स फॉर दी अप्रिल एग्जाम्स ताकि हम लोग का एक बार में एग्जाम क्लियर हो थैंक यू हेलो एवरी वन थैंक यू सो हेलो एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन ऑन अ संडे मॉर्निंग सो स्टार्टिंग नॉट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम स्टार्टिंग विद हाउ द कंटेंट ऑफ सी पी हाउ सी पी वन शुड बी प्रोसीडेड विद फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नोइंग द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द पेपर CP1 will be CP1 exam will consist of paper one and paper two. So uh, paper one will be a normal theoretical exam. Uh, there will be no numerical in CP1. Um, the the course is entirely theoretical. Uh, paper two will be a case study based paper, wherein uh, you will have uh, where you will have uh, usually two case studies being asked, and each case study is generally split in the uh, split by fifty fifty marks each. and there will be several sub parts to it so difference between paper 1 and paper 2 is that paper 1 focuses a lot on uh, knowledge plus application and paper 2 focuses on application plus the higher order thinking skills so uh, in paper 2 there will be uh, a lot many areas where you need to think uh, out out of the box uh, uh, it will be wider areas so uh, let us say a uh, topic such as uh, climate change uh, environment social governance and uh, regulation these can be tested in paper 2 uh, paper 1 there are uh, there are less chances of these being coming these coming up but paper 2 uh, it has been observed in the past that these uh, that these topics have been tested so uh, there is no requirement to pass uh, pass each exam separately the combined score is being considered uh, being considered against the pass mark then um so how is cp1 different from your sp and uh, sc level papers is that uh, in cp1 you need to uh, study all the uh, life general and pension uh, but in sp papers uh, the content is specific to either life general or pension cp1 does not go into much detail of all the areas but a helicopter view of uh, all the th all the areas are required so uh, like i have observed that cp1 is biased towards pensions a uh, lot many questions from uh, pension is being asked and so that area is very important um so i think the chapter number 5 uh, chapter number 5 uh, is i guess based on the pension pension section so that is very important for those observing for cp1 then uh, just uh, uh, talking about how or uh, you can start with cp1 is uh, uh so first you can go through the core readings 
the core reading is simple. It's not difficult to understand. There are not many technicalities as in SC subject. This is another difference between CP1 and SA. Uh, so uh, the core reading is easy to understand. You can first go through the core reading. Then uh, you, can make, uh, you can go through the summary if you want. Uh, and then you can move on to practicing the back questions. So um, around seven to eight questions are there at the back of each chapter. So you can go through them. After this, if you want, you can start with revision notes or you may uh, do the revision notes after completing the entire syllabus. Why I'm saying this because uh, in CP1, the topics are interlinked. So one question will test uh, well, if it has three parts, those test three different areas. So uh, doing the booklet will become a repetitive thing. You will leave the same question in different, different booklets and different parts will be there in each booklet. So uh, like I did not uh, start the booklet, uh, I did not do the booklet in between the study. I did, I did the revision notes at the end or maybe uh, like after uh, completing a considerable portion of the syllabus. That is how you can start, that is how you can proceed with the course. Then um, uh, for past papers, you can either use, a, uh, for uh, solving the papers, you can either use past papers or uh, there are IFOE A sets wherein um, every question is analyzed. So that can also be used as helpful. Next, um, if we see how uh, how to proceed with the course, since, it's, uh, since there are 40 chapters, so uh, sometimes it becomes difficult to uh, cover all the chapters together. So uh, there are around seven to eight sections in which you can divide all the 40 chapters and you can proceed in that manner. I'll just share my screen. So uh, basically the order of study should be uh, as you can see on the screen. Um, is my screen visible? Yes, and it's visible. Okay. So uh, first you can, uh, so for those who are appearing in September also, you can use this to revise. And those who are starting with the subject, they can also use it. Uh, so chapter 8 to 16 covers the asset markets and the asset valuation section. Uh, and there's also an, uh, also a chapter for uh, regarding economic influences. This is a chunk which should be covered together, 8 to 16. Then you can go through the actuarial control cycle, which is chapter 0. Um, in chapter 0, this, uh, this actuarial control cycle uh, is being used to answer a lot of questions in the IFOA. So uh, the, the structure of the actuarial control cycle is used to answer a lot many questions. So it will be advisable if you go through it in the beginning only. You can come back to it later on after you finish the entire syllabus to understand the cycle better. Then you should go through chapter four to seven, which will be the description of all the life, general and pension products. Uh, so life and general products are uh, fairly simple to understand because not much of a detail or uh, not much details are given. But for pension, a lot of a uh, lot many details are mentioned, and uh, that is where uh, that is where you should focus on. Next comes the risk man risk management section. So uh, for covering the risk management section, you should have a fair idea of chapter four to seven because uh, it, the risk will be uh, dependent. Uh, the risk would be of the uh, obviously of the life, general, and pension products only. So uh, you should have a fair idea of the products. So uh, in the risk management section, there are basically the risks and what should be the mitigation strategy for each risk. This is what is being covered in the risk management section. Um, like this is a very big chunk of CP1 syllabus and earlier CP1, uh, CP1 used to be called risk management. So uh, you can understand the importance of this section. Um, then moving on, uh, you have chapter 31 to 38. Here the topics are not interlinked. But uh, this focuses on liability valuation, capital management, monitoring, and all those areas. So this should be covered in one go. Then uh, you can cover chapter 17 to 19, which covers about which covers the data assumptions and modeling modeling section. This should be covered in one go because um, because for understanding modeling modeling chapters, you need to have an idea about data and assumptions. 
and the questions are also generally interlinked between the three chapters so it's advisable you go through the three chapters and then do questions for these uh, for these topics next comes chapter 20 to 23 uh, wherein um, you have uh, again the chapters are not interlinked in interlinked in this section as well uh, you will have mortality expenses and product design product design is a very scoring area a question of 15 to 16 marks is usually asked based on product design uh, and this is a uh, area which the co-reading uh, which the co-reading is very much detailed in so product design is something you should focus on and product pricing next is chapter one two three which is remaining um which covers the regulations and the general business environment uh it looks a small section but uh in the april 22 attempt regulations was the area which was tested the most in paper two around uh, 40 to 45 marks came from the regulations section so anything can be tested in the ifoa so that is uh that is uh, that is a particular order which you should uh go through while uh, either revising your syllabus or those who are starting out with the syllabus. After you are done with, uh, after you're done with, like, uh, after you're done with the syllabus, uh, as I said, going through the core reading, practicing the questions, and then coming to the past papers. So, uh, firstly, uh, understand that in the IFOA, book work is least expected. Um, questions which will be direct are not at all expected in the IFOA. In IIA, you can expect, but IFOA will not give you any book work questions. If there are, it will be just um, 10 marks, or 10 marks or even less than that. And for that, if you write the answers which are limited to the co-reading, I have seen generally the examiner's report gives you very little credit for that. Um, you need to think something out of the box. Uh, you cannot just uh, replicate what's there in the co-reading um leave aside plagiarism so you cannot uh, even if the core reading question comes you cannot use the core reading uh, to uh, to its code to write the answer next is um uh, core reading understanding what is there in the core reading knowing where uh, where each topic is present is important since it's a foster since there are 40 chapters it's difficult to remember all but just know what 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 topic is covered in each chapter this will help you in referencing during the exam. In the exam, you cannot uh, rely on um, using the PDF or using Control Plus F to find something in your something in the PDF. You cannot. You will not have the time to do that. CP one is a very lengthy paper, so um, just make sure you know what is there in the core reading. Um, for I students, definitely you will have to uh, learn a few things, uh, which are tested generally in your past papers. Next is um, uh, doing limited number of questions, but doing it and doing it uh, in a way that you can under that you can uh, attempt those questions when it's asked you again. So uh, there has been a trend of uh, asking a similar type of questions. So if you do a lot many questions, people start practicing um, questions from let's say 2003, 2004 which is not advisable because the uh, because the trend of the syllabus has changed so it's not advisable that you start doing papers from 2003 2004 uh, generally start with the recent years papers give more weightage to to the recent years papers that is where you will learn the most so do limited number of questions but do in such a manner that you will retain it and uh, retain it and you can use it in your exam next uh, for those appearing in September and uh, even and in future, you can do three to four papers under exam conditions. Uh, so, how to revise huge content one month? So, uh, I will say just go through the past papers because your past papers will somewhere, somewhere or the other cover all the topics. And if not, uh, all the important topics will be covered and uh, that is that is what uh, that is what you should do in the last one month just going through the past papers and if you have time you can go through the x series and um, uh, maybe x series and if you want you can go through the course notes very quickly if you want to do so 
but uh, the past papers will be the key area where you should work on and uh, practicing the papers under exam conditions so um, uh, sir does that answer the question okay so uh, you should practice three to four papers under exam conditions which will give you how much uh, how much time you should devote to each question so uh, there uh, the paper is lengthy and um, um, like we have a tendency of using the answers to uh, to immediately see what we have to check against what we have thought of and that is something uh, which reduces the speed so three to four papers under exam conditions should be given up here for mocks if uh, if you uh, have the access but uh, yeah that is that is advisable next uh, the use of command verbs by ifoa so uh, by ifoa and ii so uh, they use the command verb in the question such as discuss explain describe so these words will give you an idea of how much to write we have a query of uh, how much should be written under each question so these words will give you an idea if a question mentions explain describe and discuss this means it should be it should be written in depth each point should be stretched a lot to gain those marks and it's usually uh, one mark or half mark for each point even if you stretch in that so uh, describe explain a uh, questions as are those where you need to give most of the time to by writing a paper then there are outline suggest and um, yeah outline and suggest type of question where you just need to write one liners so this one liner will fetch you half mark and this is the area where wide uh, wide ideas need to be written and not and each idea should not be stretched so much uh, so this will save a lot of time and the time saved you can devote to the described questions so it's not like uh, you devote if if it's a five mark outline question you should not give more than um, 8 to 10 minutes for that and the rest of the time you can use for describe a uh, describe explain type of question there are questions which say list so list means just a word or a few words for one point there is no point explaining the entire thing so uh, a list question can be such that um, what uh, who are the stakeholders or who are the stakeholders so stakeholders just write one just write a word that a company a policy holder board of director so just just few words are required on the list question no need to explain in depth next is um, you should read the question very carefully in cp1 whatever is mentioned in the question is there for a reason so um, let's say the question mentions a small company or a large company or a medium sized company so this is there for a reason you can understand that if a question says small company you can understand that the risk appetite of the company will be small they will not take uh, they will not take um, high risk they do not have so much of capital uh, they might uh, they do not have a wide customer base this is what you can uh, this what you can understand from looking at a small company so uh, if a small company is being referenced in the question and um, let's say you are asked to suggest the risk mitigation strategies for that company you cannot use things such as uh, such as you cannot write points such as uh, the company can um, the company can invest can invest into uh, derivatives or use advanced hedging techniques this will not be possible for a small company so uh, everything should be key, should be kept in mind while writing the paper then there is the use of proprietary and mutual company a proprietary company someone is a company which has shareholders while a mutual company does not so um, you can make out uh, you can make out from this from this uh, phrase that uh, under a proprietary company for a proprietary company it will be much easier to raise capital as compared to a mutual company so uh, for a mutual company since they don't have shareholders they can either demutualize or um, or maybe raise capital maybe take loans but they uh, but it's not easy to raise capital for them so uh, these are the things uh, this is mentioned in the question and this should generate you two to three points at least these things should then generate you two to three points more then for september candidates have already discussed what you can do 
then um, make a note of all the common points that you see in the examiner's report. If not, make a note, just uh, keep a track that you should write deep. So let's say an example can be, um, I have usually seen a question on suggesting an investment strategy for a product. So a particular product is mentioned, let's say an annuity product, you need to suggest an investment strategy. So first, the structure of the answer goes, uh, the structure of the answer in each paper will be that you need to describe the liability. The liability here is annuity. You need to describe the nature, term, currency, uncertainty of the liability. And then you move on to suggesting appropriate assets for it. So if you have a list of all the assets which are there in your co-reading, such as money market instruments, bonds, index link, corporate, government bonds, you have a list of all these, all these assets. So you can easily uh, answer these type of questions. Then there is also a point saying that uh, companies should consider the risk appetite level of free capital, regulatory restrictions, uh, investment restrictions. All of these should be considered by um, setting a matched strategy. And uh, so these are the key points. And this is what the examiners look for uh, look for when they see your answer. And this is a common uh, this is a common question which can be asked. So uh, please make a note of these types of questions. Questions can be, um, let's say, on um, how to create a model. So under a model also, you know, the core reading also mentions uh, how to create a model, consider the cash flows, consider the assumptions, the common assumptions, the interrelations, the correlations, interactions between them. This is all what you need to write under how to uh, create a model. So uh, just, uh, so just, to keep a track of how these of how these uh, questions are being answered these are the common questions which are generally asked and these and maybe uh, just uh, focusing on these questions can help you clear the exam for paper 2 uh, many people have a doubt as to how will you attempt the questions which are asked on topics which you don't know about it it is just that um, during the exam you can't you can't do anything you just have to think what you know about and write the even the obvious points because obvious points are given credit in the IFO and IEI exam. So write the obvious points which you can think from the paper. Um, and just uh, the topics can be very wide. If a question is difficult for you, it is difficult for others as well. So uh, there's no need to worry about if a question or a topic gets tested which you don't know about, especially in paper two. So, uh, paper two, and uh, so yeah, you can just uh, focus on um, how how better you can answer the question. There's no such uh, set pattern for the paper two. For paper one, we can still um, use our notes and everything, but for paper two, there's no such pattern which can which can be followed. It is um, it will be based on uh, also for paper two, we have very limited papers available. So you can try out the X series for paper two to uh, get a wider view of how paper two can be answered. And uh, yeah, this is everything which I had to say and what worked for me to clear the exam. And uh, if you all have any questions, please feel free to ask any small question also. Now, uh, Anushka, my first question is, uh, the paper is very voluminous, right? So yeah. uh, like, my personal problem which i have faced one month or 1.5 months before the exam is i have read the content uh one or twice once or twice okay i have read the material i have read the revision notes but still uh i don't remember anything right now i guess this is the most common problem which all of us are facing right so how to overcome that thing and uh, what has worked for you so that we can clear the exam in this in this perspective? So, uh, as I said, you have done all the revision notes and everything, but limited content is important. Uh, focusing on limited, let's say, five years paper or six years, seven years papers. So, seven years paper in CP1 will translate to uh, 14 terms and 28 papers, paper one and paper two. So 28, even if you do, uh, even if you do such, so many, if you do these number of papers, you can get an idea of what should, what can be asked. And you can make a note of the common, of the common things, like, as I said, uh, just the investment strategy, 
मॉडलिंग uh, के बारे में हो गया तो so, ये सब चीज यू कैन राइट इट समवेयर एंड फॉर आई आई एग्जाम ऑल्सो यू कैन रेफर इट और डे बिफोर यू कैन नॉट यूज इट इन द एग्जाम बट एक दिन पहले यू कैन रेफर रेफर दोज नोट एंड दिस विल वर्क एंड समटाइम्स द क्वेश्चन आर सच दैट आर वाइड यू कैन थिंक वाइड फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर ही कंपनी का परसिस्टेंस एक्सपीरियंस इज डिटोरिएटिंग ईच डे वॉट कैन बी द रीजन सो द रीजन कैन बी वेरी यू कैन थिंक लाइक वॉट विल हैपन एक जनरल परस्पेक्टिव से सोच सकते हो कि क्या होगा और लेट से मे बी द कस्टमर सर्विस इज पुअर और द कंपनी इज हैज इंक्रीज द चार्जेस और लेट से द कंपनी कंपनी का न्यू कंपनी के बारे में कुछ खराब न्यूज चल रहा है so these can be the reasons why the persistence experience is deteriorating and it's basically think wide and matlab kuch nahi samajh aa raha so just think uh, what will you do if you were in that situation forget the co reading forget everything just uh, think what you would do if you were in that place okay now uh, as we have also talked that uh, some of the topics are very repetitive in uh, cp1 as you mentioned pensions uh while you were discussing about the strategy like uh, what what do you think is the importance of uh, the climate change and uh, regulations uh, there are few questions which are being asked repeatedly like algorithmic trading is there and uh, they are asking questions more and more on the pensions the pricing part and uh, like one question is always there on uh, uh, like uh, what are the risks and how to mitigate those risks so is there any uh, like uh, what other things can the students look for like uh, to prepare well for the exams apart from these topics so like as i said risk management covers a majority of the cp1 syllabus risk and risk mitigation if you know this uh, you can be sure of getting 15 to 20 marks or even 25 marks from risk and risk mitigation once this is done there are topics there will always be topics which you don't know there will be some topics jo aisa lagega ki ye to kabhi dekha hi nahi hai so for that you can for uh, in the exam for once you can skip those questions or write uh, how much you want and come back to it later on because later on just when your when your mind is uh, when your mind is uh, when you have completed all the questions so the mark shant ho jata hai and you can think about those questions and कुछ कुछ पॉइंट जनरेट हो जाता है इट्स नॉट लाइक एकदम भी कुछ नहीं आएगा एंड एज आई सेड जनरल यू कैन थिंक एकदम जनरल अगर कुछ भी नहीं समझ आए तो लेट से एल्गो ट्रेडिंग के बारे में अगर पूछ लिया एल्गो ट्रेडिंग ट्रेडिंग ऑल दो इट्स देयर इन द सिलेबस बट एल्गो ट्रेडिंग यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड कि इट्स कॉम्प्लेक्स तो आप उसमें एक रिस्क बता सकते हो कि उसका एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज कॉम्प्लेक्स सो दिस इज नॉट समथिंग कि एल्गो ट्रेडिंग जिसको पता है वो ही आंसर कर सकता है कि कोई भी आंसर कर सकता है so these kind of points you can obviously create and uh, this will come with uh, practicing it's not always ki aapka answer examiner's report se match karega but broadly direction sahi hona chahiye it's not uh, exactly match kabhi nahi karte they also give give credit for alternative answers so that is now one more uh, one more problem which uh, i feel the students are facing is they are not uh, uh, really answering in depth like uh, it happens sometimes with me also like i try revolving around the same point like for example if the question is of 5 marks and we for example the question is on banking and about the types of risk so uh, the students they are always revolving around credit risk about the credit history and so it only consists one marks whatever points you are writing but still it 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 will, it will only fetch you one mark so what is your uh say on that and how can the person think in depth so if you can throw some light on that I guess there is some technical error. Please give me some time.
She will be right back in just two minutes. Anushka, are you there? तो so mainly uh, मैं मैं जो point out करना चाहता हूँ वो ये है कि जब तक अनुष्का is back कुछ कुछ topics हैं जिसमें हम लोग को बहुत ज़्यादा stress देना चाहिए जैसे कि आपका pension funds वाला topic हो गया and उस type के insurance जो कि बहुत repeatedly आ रहा है अगर आप past papers पढ़ रहे हैं जैसे कि long term care insurance हो गया या फिर third party motor liability हो गया ठीक है तो ये सब टाइप के जो इंश्योरेंस है इसमें आप थोड़ा ज्यादा फोकस करिए जैसे कि एक एक लॉन्ग टर्म केयर पे वो लोग बहुत ज्यादा बार क्वेश्चंस पूछते हैं और जैसे कि थोड़ा सा अनरिकॉग्नाइज टाइप का चीज जैसे कि आप कोई ट्रेन टिकट का इंश्योरेंस करवा रहे हैं या फिर आप एक फुटबॉल क्लब का इंश्योरेंस करवा रहे हैं या फिर आप एक ट्रैवल एजेंट आप एक ट्रैवलर हैं जैसे कि एक सिंग एक बैंड है एक म्यूजिशियन का आप उनका इंश्योरेंस करवा रहे हो तो इन सब में क्या है कि आपको सोचना पड़ेगा ठीक है Uh, और 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 इसमें जैसे क्या है कि आप इन्वेस्टमेंट्स वाले टॉपिक में कौन कौन से इन्वेस्टमेंट्स में हम लोग को करना चाहिए ठीक है इन्वेस्टमेंट के क्या रिस्क हो सकते हैं एसेट लाइबिलिटी मॉडलिंग रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन आप किन किन लोगों से कंसल्ट करते हो उनका आप एक लिस्ट बना लीजिए ठीक है एक जो सबसे बड़ा पॉइंट जो मेरे को लगता है वो ये है कि आपको बुकलेट वाइज कॉमन पॉइंट निकालना पड़ेगा सीपी का जो रिविजन नोट अगर आप देखेंगे तो उसमें देर आर टेन बुकलेट्स राइट तो उन 10 के 10 बुकलेट्स में आपको क्या करना पड़ेगा कॉमन पॉइंट्स निकाल निकाल के लिख लेना पड़ेगा एक जगह ताकि फॉर एग्जांपल अगर रिस्क मैनेजमेंट से क्वेश्चन आएगा तो मेरे को ये लिखना है ठीक है अगर मान लीजिए इन्वेस्टमेंट से क्वेश्चन आएगा तो मेरे को ये लिखना है अगर मान लीजिए एसेट लाइबिलिटी मॉडलिंग से आएगा तो मेरे को ये लिखना है तो उससे क्या होगा ना आपको बार बार वो चीज नहीं पढ़ना पड़ेगा राइट right? आज अगर आपको ऑफिस से 15 से 20 दिन का भी छुट्टी मिल रहा है तो भी आप ये पेपर बहुत अच्छे तरीके से क्लियर कर सकते हैं प्रोवाइडेड कि आपके वो कॉमन पॉइंट्स लिखे हुए हैं और ये कॉमन पॉइंट्स ऐसा चीज है ना जो कोई आपको दे नहीं सकता ये आपको खुद से बनाना पड़ेगा जो कि आप समझ पा रहे हैं जो जो मतलब आपका जो समझ से जो आपने कॉमन पॉइंट बनाया है कि भाई अगर बुकलेट टू रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन आएगा तो उसमें मैं ये ये कॉमन पॉइंट्स लिख सकता हूँ ठीक है उसके बाद में जैसे आप कभी भी कोई पॉइंट लिखते हैं तो आपको उसके अंदर का भी थोड़ा बहुत लिखना पड़ेगा जैसे मान लीजिए अगर 10 नंबर का क्वेश्चन है आपने आठ पॉइंट डाले तो आपको उसमें बिल्कुल मार्क्स नहीं मिलेगा आपको उसमें अंदर में लिखना पड़ेगा कि भैया क्रेडिट रिस्क है तो क्यों है किस तरीके से है आज आप देखेंगे इनके जो पास्ट एग्जाम सोल्यूशन होते हैं तो उसमें बेसिकली दे आर ऑलवेज मैंशनिंग की आप पहले जनरल पॉइंट लिखते हो हम लोग क्या करते हैं जनरल जनरल पॉइंट्स लिखते रहते लेकिन आपको उस टॉपिक से स्पेसिफिक पॉइंट भी लिखने पड़ेंगे दैट इज ऑल्सो एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है मॉनिटरिंग हो गया सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट हो गया ठीक है वेदर रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस हो गए आज के दिन पे क्लाइमेट चेंज रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस हो गए अभी पैंडमिक गया पैंडमिक रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस हो गए ठीक है तो ये सब क्या इंटरेस्ट रेट पे क्वेश्चन आ सकता है क्योंकि अभी रिसेंट में इंटरेस्ट रेट हाइक हुआ है इन्फ्लेशन रिलेटेड पॉइंट्स को गैदर कीजिए तो ये सब क्या बहुत कॉमन कॉमन चीज है जो आपको देखने को मिलेगा ठीक है इस तरीके से आप अपना प्रिपरेशन को बहुत अच्छा कर सकते हैं एंड आई होप सो आप लोग सब मेरे से एसोसिएटेड है तो मैंने आप सबको फ्लैश कार्ड दिया होगा पढ़ने के लिए फ्लैश कार्ड एकदम अच्छे से पढ़िए आप दिन में आ, मतलब पूरा टाइम आप फ्लैश कार्ड को जितना पढ़ेंगे ना आपको उतना रिकॉल होगा मैं को मेरे को ये लगता है कि अगर आप एक घंटा अच्छे से पढ़ते हैं 
आप करीब करीब एक से दो चैप्टर का फ्लैश कार्ड कर सकते हैं मैंने फ्लैश कार्ड एक ऐसा चीज है जो आपको बेसिकली उन चालीस चैप्टर का जो है फोर्टी चैप्टर जो इतना वॉल्यूमनस चीज है वो आप तीन दिन में कवर कर सकते हो अगर आप फ्लैश कार्ड एक बार अच्छे से पढ़ लेते हैं तो राइट इवन इफ यू आर स्टडिंग फ्लैश कार्ड पर वीक आपका पूरा सिलेबस एक बार के लिए दो बार रिवाइज हो गया एंड जैसा कि अनुष्का ने पॉइंट आउट किया कि हमने को लिमिटेड कंटेंट पे बहुत फोकस करना है तो आपको कंटेंट को एकदम पूरा लिमिटेड रखना पड़ेगा तभी क्या आप अच्छे से उसमें आंसर भी कर पाएंगे ठीक है सो आई गेस अनुष्का इज हैविंग सम टेक्निकल इशू सो वी नीड टू एंड द सेशन हियर एंड वील कीप मोर सच सेशन विथ अनदर प्रोफेशनल दो क्लियर सीपी वन Thank you all for joining us today and we'll be keeping more such sessions. Thank you. Happy studying.